Hello, this is Rashid Ansiri, Doctor Engineer and Technologist in Mechanical Engineering, and I will try in this video to technologically introduce the design resistance of a fillet weld based on the Eurocode 3 standards, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First of all, it is to note that the design resistance of a weld can be simply seen as either a verification of the resistance of a weld with a certain well-known dimensions under a certain well-known loading, or as a sizing in terms of finding the minimum uh, dimensions uh, for a weld uh, in order to ensure its resistance under a well-known loading. It is to note also that there are two principal weld parts that considerably influence the weld resistance. The first one is the effective throat thickness and the second one is the effective length. The effective throat thickness is determined uh, as the distance between this point which is uh, the root of the weld and the surface of the weld. This is valid for the case of mitre fillet weld. For the case of convex fillet weld, uh, the throat is the, is the distance between this point which is the root of the weld and the surface of the weld excluding the allowance uh, as it is indicated by uh, this figure. Uh, the same thing uh, for the case of convex fillet weld. For the case of uh, deep penetration fillet weld, the throat is determined as it is depicted by this figure. And uh, these figures uh, can help you to determine uh, the throat or the effective throat thickness uh, in the case of fillet welds. Now for the effective length. The effective length is the actual length of the weld uh, from which the crater extremities are subtracted. Uh, the crater extremities are related to the starting and the fading of the arc. In other terms, the crater extremities are related to, uh, to the beginning uh, and uh, the end of the weld. And uh, the crater extremities are considered equal to uh, the effective throw thickness. So the effective length is equal to the actual length minus uh, two times uh, the effective throw thickness. Uh, this is based on the European, uh, European standard, the Eurocode 3 standards. And the, this Eurocode 3 standards uh, requires that for a well designed to carry lo a load, uh, the, the length uh, should not be less than uh, 30 millimeters, the, the length of, of the weld, of course, and this length should not uh, be uh, less than six times uh, the effective throat, and the effective uh, throat thickness should not be less than three millimeter. Of course, uh, this is indicated by the Eurocode 3 standards. Now I will talk about the principal types of stress applied on a fillet weld. There are the pure shear stress and the tensile plus shear stress. The pure shear stress is encountered when the direction of the loading is parallel to the weld, as it is indicated by this figure. And the tensile plus shear stress is encountered when uh, the direction of the loading is both parallel and perpendicular to the weld. And you can see here in this figure that the direction of the loading is parallel to this contact surface between uh, the weld and uh, the workpiece, and the direction of the loading is uh, perpendicular to this contact surface between the weld and the workpiece. These types of stress will create internal stresses uh, within the fillet weld as it is indicated by this figure. You can see that the internal uh, stresses are applied on the throat plane of the fillet, of the fillet weld. 
and uh, we distinguish three types of uh, internal uh, stress uh, the the sigma perpendicular which indicate the normal stress perpendicular to the throat plane of the weld and uh, there are two types of uh, shear stress uh, two perpendicular which indicate the shear stress in the throat plane of the weld and perpendicular to the weld axis and two uh, parallel which indicate the shear stress in the throat plane of the weld and parallel to the weld axis. So we have a stress state, an internal stress state, composed by these three types of internal stress. Now the directional method proposed by the Eurocard 3 standards requires that the, the Vomises equivalent stress must be uh, less than uh, the nominal ultimate tensile strength of the weaker part joint, indicated by Fu, divided by an appropriate correlation factor, indicated by beta W, and also divided by a partial safety factor, indicated by gamma M2. And uh, the Eurocard 3 uh, standards requires that the normal stress sigma perpendicular must be less than 90% the nominal ultimate tensile strength of the weaker uh, of the weaker part joint divided by a partial safety factor uh, the appropriate correlation factor beta w uh, is taken from the Eurocard 3 uh, standards and the nominal ultimate tensile strength uh, of the weaker part joint FU is taken from the European standards 2025 part 2 and the partial safety factor is, uh, is taken 1.25 uh, in the case of a resistance of welds, bolts, rivets, pins, and plates in bearing. Now, this table uh, that belongs to the European Standards 2025 Part 2 presents the, the principal mechanical properties of the principal steels used in metallic construction. And uh, we are interested in the nominal ultimate tensile strength which is this part of the table and you can see for example that for uh, a workpiece made of steel S275 and uh, having a thickness in the range of 3 millimeters 100 millimeters which is this range will have uh, a tensile strength in the in the range uh, 410 megapascal 560 megapascal and this table that belongs to the Eurocard 3 standards permits to determine the correlation factor beta w for the principal steels used in metallic construction for example for a workpiece made of steel s235 the correlation factor beta w will be 0 0.8 and for uh, another workpiece made of steel s355 the correlation factor beta w will be 0 0.9 it is to note also that the directional method permit to size the fillet weld in fact uh, the internal stresses in the fillet weld are in function of the of the imposed load f this load of course is imposed to the fillet weld and also uh, these internal stresses are in function of uh, the effective throat thickness and the effective length of the fillet weld the injection of these uh, internal stresses into the resistance in equation uh, proposed by the Eurocard 3 standards will permit to determine the minimum length and the minimum throat 
that will permit to the fillet well to resist under the existing load. Of course, the minimum effective length of the fillet weld is determined for a fixed value of the weld effective throat thickness and uh, the minimum effective throat thickness uh, is determined for a fixed value of the weld effective length. And it should be remembered here that uh, according to the Eurocore 3 standards uh, and for a fillet weld designed to carry load, uh, the effective length should not be less than 30 millimeters and should not be less than six times the effective throw thickness. And also the effective throw thickness should not be less than three millimeters. Now it's to note that the Eurocard 3 standards presents a simplified method that permits to quickly and simply verify uh, the design resistance of a fillet weld. This simplified method is based on uh, the inequation that postulates that the design value of the weld force per unit length, the force here is the load applied to the fillet weld, this design value of the weld force per unit length must be less than the design weld resistance per unit length. And the design weld resistance per unit length is equal to the, to the design shear strength of the weld multiplied by the effective throat thickness. The design shear strength of the weld is equal to the nominal ultimate tensile strength of the weaker part joint divided by the square root of 3 and also divided by the correlation factor beta w and the partial safety factor gamma m2. This educational video takes end. I will appreciate all your remarks and suggestions in the comments and I will answer all your questions also in the comments. Please accept my deep respects and thank you very much for your attention.